When 17-year-old Henry Stifel was involved in an automobile accident in 1982, the world of spinal cord injury research was a dramatically different place. Back in those days, there were a number of us who weren't even sure what spinal cord injury was. Uh, we soon heard that the conventional medical wisdom back then was that there wasn't a whole lot you could do about it. And of course, we didn't accept that any more than Henry did. It was predictable that Hank Stifel, Henry's father, would not go quietly into the night after his son's accident. So we put our heads together and thought, well, what can we do? Uh, what should we do? My God, what can we do? We thought the best thing to do is look for research that might be aiming to cure this uh, paralysis. The Stifel Paralysis Research Foundation was born of Hank and his wife Charlotte's belief that if they could support the best research out there, eventually treatments would come. But the truth was that in the early 1980s, there was precious little good spinal cord research anywhere. There was a bit of an ingenious empire builder in Hank Stifel back in those days. By the mid 80s, he had set his sights on the American Paralysis Association, which was doing the same thing as the Stifel Foundation, only better. APA used independent scientists to advise the board on research investments. In short order, Hank joined the APA board, became its chair, and eventually moved APA from Dallas to New Jersey. Doctors have confirmed today that the actor Christopher Reeve has been paralyzed and needs a respirator to breathe. He broke his neck after being thrown by a horse during a show jumping competition. The doctors will not speculate on whether the paralysis may be permanent. It was Hank Stifel who reached out to Christopher and Dana and began their initiation into his world of research. Those early conversations were key to the Reeves committing themselves to APA. They were won over by the research program Hank had helped shape. And so it was that what began as a Stifel Foundation in 1982, literally on a card table in Henry's second floor bedroom, emerged in 1999 as the Reeve Foundation. In the beginning, Hank understood a few things. He had to attract top tier scientists to spinal cord research. Years before networking and leveraging and collaboration were buzzwords in science, Hank knew they would have to be. Parents couldn't be expected to recognize excellence in science and certainly could not be expected to take the long view. And finally, the spinal cord is a dauntingly complex tissue and no one person alone, no one lab, no one area of expertise would ever be able to fix it. With these insights, as his pole stars, Hank began to build, taking aim at the problem. He asked Carl Kotzman, a prominent Alzheimer's investigator, to create a panel of scientific experts to vet research for APA and make funding recommendations to the board. And more specifically, he asked Carl to tap his own top-tier colleagues to join. It all played out then, as Hank envisioned, but more remarkably, it continues on in this way today. And then there was a hands-on approach. Hank was willing to travel anywhere to talk about spinal cord injury. One of the storied friendships to emerge from this wanderlust was between Hank and Charlotte and Martin Schwab at the University of Zurich. In 1986, the Schwab team had a breakthrough discovery with profound implications for spinal cord research. The Stifel team landed in Zurich shortly thereafter. They visited the Schwab lab and continued the conversation over dinner. The New Jersey to Zurich visits went on for years. Novartis recently tested the Schwab discovery in a phase one clinical trial in acutely injured patients. And Martin, first funded by APA in the late 1980s, is funded today by Reeve. His is one of seven laboratories in our International Research Consortium on Spinal Cord Injury. The 1995 launch of the consortium, the first of its kind in spinal cord research, was the direct outcome of Hank's belief in the power of collaboration. Our vision was then, is now, and always will be that we want to cure this paralysis caused by spinal cord injury. Hank was an oft times brilliant, sometimes exasperating, sometimes exasperated man. Yet underneath, there was a proverbial heart of gold and also 
a heart that bled. And not just for Henry, but for all the others whose lives were touched by spinal cord injury. He was a tough taskmaster and a remarkably good teacher, in the truest sense of the word, founder. Hank was ours. So much of what the spinal cord field is today grew out of his belief that if we funded the best science, there would be cures. He was a force of nature, an outsized personality, smart, gentle, and yet tough as nails. Such an interesting and complicated man who left an indelible mark on our world. The closing words of Seamus Heaney's poem, A Kite for Michael and Christopher, speak powerfully to what Hank did as he emerged from his own grief and soared above it. Before the kite plunges down into the wood and this lion goes useless, take it in your two hands, boys, and feel the strumming, rooted long tail pull of grief. You were born fit for it. Stand in here, in front of me, and take the strain. Hank's magnificence was that for all his human frailties, he stood and took the strain and we are all so much the better for it. And, and finally, I've got to thank all, all of you folks for coming tonight. Because by your presence here, you too are sharing that vision of curing paralysis caused by spinal cord injury.